Yeah, we're here talking about South Soft Football, Lou. So I'm going to start out with a question to you. Uh, what, do you what, what would you say was your most memorable high school football game? High school football game. Oh, probably as a senior, probably against uh, Shakota or Ufall or Stillwell. One of those three teams that are close here, oh, proximity-wise. Yeah. 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 yeah, I remember all of them. Uh, yeah, we beat yeah. Stillwell in the last minute. Last minute, right. We had came from behind. And uh, that was a big win for us fairly early in the season. And uh, Shakota was homecoming, and, and, and uh, uh, Ufala was a big matchup. Went down there. To, yeah. Went down there yeah. to, and won. They were supposed to be really good. Right. Uh, of course, Spyro was always you a got a great challenge. story. You remember the, remember the story oh, yeah. about Ufala? Yeah, remember that one? Oh, yeah, the, on, the, on the extra point. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't have any we – We had a plot. Yeah, we had a setup where people do it where – uh, the snapper, which I was a snapper, can can throw an underhand pass over here 20 yards to a holder or to a person behind a wall, and they catch it and they run in. Because we had old lineman over there to get lineman. set up. We had no lineman over here. It was just me and Craig, who was the kicker, and Robbie Gibson, the holder. True, yeah. And I got mixed up. We just scored, and uh, I snapped it to the holder. And I kicked it. And he kicked it, and we made <laughs> And they it. stood there and watched it. And they it. stood there, and the other coach <laughs> – Bless his heart, went crazy. <laughs> coach Bell from Ufala, really got it. Coach legendary for, coach, legendary yeah. coach, coach yeah. for a long time. He lost his ever loving mind. He's yeah. a great coach, you know. And at Ufala, he's beloved in Ufala. Okay, and uh, he, uh, yeah, he was. He thought, you know, they got to be in motion or something. Yeah. Have well, you know, seen. then I think the other one you go back to is Grove too. You know, oh yeah. Second round playoffs because we played Broken Bow in the first round mm -hmm. and uh, hadn't won a playoff game since. The 60s, since okay. uh, late 60s. I did not know that. Uh, you know, I think in 71 they went to Broken Bone, got beat. I don't mm -hmm. know what happened in 72. In 78 they went to Bigsby. 77 or 78. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 77. Or, yeah. Seven, yeah. 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 Went, to, went to Bigsby and got beat. So I think that that was the first playoff win that we'd had in a number of years. And then we go to Grove. And, you know, Sam Pittman, who's now the head yeah. coach at Arkansas, yeah. played tailback for him. Yeah. And uh, that was many LBSs ago for him. Yes. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And then he, uh, uh, they jumped out, you know, on a 14-point lead, mm -hmm. and we came back and tied it up with about 15 seconds left and yeah. then threw the interception for a touchdown. They, so. uh, they you know, he was uh, – Sam Pittman was uh, – he played linebacker and tailback. He would uh, – He was also he, the kicker. He Was he? Yeah. Really good player. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, he's he wasn't nearly as big as he is now when you watch him at Arkansas. But, but, uh, uh, oh yeah, that was a tough one. That was a tough one. You know, uh, we had some miscues on. Uh, they may have partially blocked a punt or something. I think early helped them get. No, something no, they going. just no, they no, they no, they they, uh, they actually just uh, jumped out on us and then mm -hmm. uh, you know Richard Hawkins. Uh, changed the play on Etheridge. Uh, uh, that's really a true story. You know, I, we still talk about this. Me and Coach Terry still talk about this. Uh, Richard didn't like the play he was bringing in. You know, back in those days, we rolled in. You know, you carried oh, yeah. the play in. Yeah. You know, yeah. And Richard changed it, and uh, oh. he ran a draw, and Blunt went 40 yards for a touchdown. They okay. got us back in the game. Okay. 14-7. I got you. And then, uh, and then, then, and then the momentum kind of flipped. So. Anyway, all right. So let's go. To, let's go to this next question. Who would you want? Who of the coaches that you that you've uh, played for? Uh, tell me who you who you who most most influenced influenced you, or uh, who'd you who'd you want your kid to play for? Well, I think a lot of them. You know, we had those guys we had in high school. I think I can name about all of them. You know, I had great respect and admiration for a, a lot of them. All of them, really. Very much so. Yeah. And they all Very had much their, so. they all had their different qualities. You know, uh, Etheridge was the was the head coach. He was the organizer. Uh, coach Terry, it, you know, he he knew a great deal about the technical aspects of football. He was and, a schemer and, and a schemer. The work ethic of 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 uh, watching a whole lot of film on the weekends. And Coach Abs was a guy that just you know gets anybody never can relate to a lot of people. Get into play motivator, yeah, motivator. And Randy Wood, uh, he didn't coach me, but. But he was a family friend of my mom and dad's, right. and uh, you know he was a, a very good quarterback coach, very precise. He coached great, you. great attention to detail, attention yeah. to detail on sprinting out, and throwing the football, and, and running the option, yeah. things like yeah. that. And uh, Bill Whedon was a uh, energetic mo uh, defensive back coach. Yeah, you know, and that's pretty much the staff, isn't it? Yeah, well, well I mean, yeah, pretty much part. covered it. 
pretty much you covered know. it and pretty much would have said about the same thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I've always said this because I was fortunate enough to work with Ron Etheridge. Mm -hmm. at, you know, mm -hmm. I, I went back and coached with him yeah. And after I graduated. And, you know, sometimes that can be a good thing, it can be a bad thing, but it was a really good thing for me mm -hmm. because I got to see two sides of him. And I got to see him, you know, I've always said this about, about Coach Etheridge. He was probably the best motivator of young, the best leader of young men I've ever been around. You know, he can, he can, he can because he, he lived a pure life. He, what, what he, uh, he didn't just talk that talk. He right. walked that walk, right. you know. And, and so um, he never deviated from the path that he had. He got a great plan and a vision. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he always stayed on that track. Yeah. And like I say, the things that you said about the other guys, I think every one of them in some sh shape, form, or fashion, even though they weren't our co weren't our position coach, right. had an, had an impact on us. Oh yeah, because they were all real. You know, the thing about it is they were all really quality men mm -hmm. and quality coaches. They were. And here's the other thing about that too is a lot of people don't know. Ron Esters was 32 years old when he got that job. Blows my mind how young yeah. they were when we were playing yeah. for him. Yeah, and I think yeah. I think Virgil was the oldest, and he was the old timer at 37 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. When you think about it like that, and hey, I'm 32, you know, which is a long time ago, and that's. Yeah. yeah, and so, you know, the one thing about the Salisaw staffs that that th throughout the years, there's not been a, a a ton of turnover. It's 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 had a lot of consistency mm -hmm. through those years. For a lot of years, it went, and yeah. a lot of guys that have have had some uh, have, have enjoyed some good success and and had some good times and coached a lot of great young men like we were able to do. Yeah, you know, and in, in uh, starting in 2008 when we both came back here. Yeah, you know, oh, that was. Uh yeah, 2008. You know, I'd, I'd been wanting to get back here for quite a few years, and finally got to come back, and uh, that was a great experience. To you know, Matt, my middle son was a sophomore. Right. Sam was really young. He's a fifth or sixth. He grader. was fifth grade. Yeah. When when I got here. And yeah. that's just a great experience, and and we we had a great run there for six years. Right. You know, and uh, uh, won a lot of games. A lot of good, a lot of good stories from those some of those games. We have a lot of we, they, we do. They're we do funny. Have. They may not have been funny at the time. They're funny now. <laughs> That's true. That's but, uh, true. But uh, yeah. Okay. Um, moving on with our moving on with our next question here. <laughs> okay. Uh, which high school rule rule would you would you like to to see changed? High school rule. Boy, wow! I never really thought about rules very much, because uh, we always just had to abide by them. We knew what the we were, you know. That was part, I know of, the, they part of the game. I know they won't allow uh, just just this this. Uh, I know I know that I know they wouldn't uh, liberalize holding, uh, holding. <laughs> I, I think it is. I think it's. Very I think much. it is liberalized. <laughs> pretty liberal. Depending now. on what crew you get, it's, it's pretty <laughs> liberal. Yeah, you know uh, maybe. Uh, Maybe the uh, the uh, celebration rule, maybe maybe a little bit. I'm not sure if I know exactly what it is, but I saw it uh, I saw it executed a couple of weeks ago. It was a little bit harsh. Certainly I did. And, and the same thing. Harsh, same thing. Know. I was thinking. Same thing. I was I was thinking too. I get it that you know you you have you you have to be just in your rules, and you have to to. Uh, uh, you know what? A lot of our fan base doesn't understand uh, that, that that the average Joe doesn't understand that. Those guys are regulated by a group of, of directors at Oklahoma City that, mm -hmm. that govern our officials. And so when they come to evaluate them, or they're, and, and most of the time there is an evaluator at every game watching a lot, a lot of crews. Mm -hmm. And so the feedback that they get back determine how far they go in the playoffs and if they get playoff games and thing on yeah. so on and so forth. And that's what officials strive to do, just yeah. like right. teams do. They, yeah. want to, they want to be in the playoffs. Yeah. Officials want to call playoff games. So when they let that stuff go then it hurts their rating mm -hmm. so I get where I get that side of it but you know like we were on the broadcast and I said oh they're talking this may come back I think that that excessive celebration takes away from the the the, the passion of the game right. to a degree right I also think that uh we, we kind of lose our common sense when we get when we follow the um the rules to the letter sometimes I think that those could be because you know, those rules are set by our National Federation Rules Committee, and I and I get that, and and so we don't want to take away from the integrity of the game, but at the same time, I think that there's a fine balance in there between yeah. that and the uh, um, and common sense factor. 
Yeah. So, you know, it's just like, you You know, we're talking about holding. You can call holding on every play if you want to. You sure. can call flag every single play. Yeah. Somebody is yeah. holding. And I've seen some I'm, yeah. I've seen some guys get away with assault and battery before mm -hmm. on film, you know, that didn't get caught. You know, you, we like to hear, uh, I think I think both of us appreciate when a referee says, uh, we're going to just call the point of attack. We're not going to worry so much about the what goes on outside. What goes on outside, you know, unless it's something extreme, you know. Uh, but uh, then they go and call throw. the one on the other side that's plays going away from Yeah. It. Yeah. yeah, but you know, some of the refs, some of the better ones we've had say, we're just going to call the point of it where the, where the action is. We're going to look right. there, you know, right. not look around uh, 30 yards behind me or whatever. But uh, but I wouldn't say that there was there was a rule that I would, you know, it's not per really. se be changed. I think the other thing that's going to change the game, and I think it's changing it for the better, is targeting. But yeah. again, it is it is such a, a, a view differently on every uh on, on every level. Yeah. Because when, you know, the targeting first came in, high school officials kind of took to the opinion of, well, we don't have replay, we're not going to call it, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first time that, that, the first year that rule was installed, I remember in 2000, and, I think it was 2015, they could have thrown about 10 targeting pen penalties, you know, in that, in that game that I coached in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think that that's something that uh, everything's a filter down effect. Will we ever see, uh, uh, you know, what am I trying to say here? Instant replay on on, oh. on on that. Will oh. we ever see that? In, high, that school, some, in high school football, yeah. will we know. see that? Because it is a trickle down effect. It all yeah. starts with the top yeah. league and and filters yeah. down. Yeah. So well, the thing that confuses all of us is pro college and high school have different rules. The clock rules are different. Pro football games are played extremely fast. College football games it takes twice as long because of the clock rules. Right. You know, and when you make a first right. down, when the clock starts back and. Uh, but I wish there would be more consistency, but that, that's not going to happen. But, uh, so, so tell me this, what's your biggest pet peeve then? About a locker room, about a situation, about you know, all these years you've coached, what's, your, what's the one pet peeve that drives you nuts? Really, nothing that I can really think of offhand. Uh, I don't, uh, it's really hard for me to, to think about those things. I mean, uh, you just went and coached. Yeah, I just went. And I didn't. I didn't. I didn't complain much. I didn't. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't. You know, I just do what I'm supposed to do. Do my job, and uh, you know, it's. Uh, I guess uh, if if a t if a if a school obtained got a player, maybe a kid that they quote unquote maybe recruited. Yeah. Maybe, and you had to play yeah. against him. Yeah, that would be it, you know. And what really was was irritating was when the other team had really good players, <laughs> <laughs> and, and they, you're trying to block them <laughs> or get off a block or something like that, and they're just good, you know. Yeah, and that's that's, that's a good, that's good, that's a good that, point. That's what that's it goes good. down to. You know? That's a good point. I guess <laughs> I guess mine would have had to have been, uh, you know, I was always a structure guy. And I always wanted to stay on schedule, and yeah. everything had to be done. I like schedule structure. Uh, to, to, you know, to yeah. a certain degree, and and uh, and I, you know, it's you know, sports has a has a military-ish kind of feel, uh -huh. you know, uh, and so you know, you stretch in straight lines. You, mm -hmm. you know, you, your cadence is always together because it's it's kind of a choreography. You, you move at the same time. When that's exactly that's exactly yeah. right. So yeah. you know, I I think the 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 you know, there's an old saying that you know sometimes. Uh, the best laid plans come unwound, at, you know, at the most inopportune times, and that's that's high school coaching right there. Yeah. High school football too. And it's, it's you know, yeah. you can have ten guys doing something in perfection, and one guy can go the wrong direction and yeah. screw the whole play up, and then you can knock ten of them down on defense, and one guy make the tackle for yeah. a five yard loss, and it's still a loss, yeah. you know. So yeah. it, it's you know, getting that, getting everybody on that same page, and and having everybody moving in the same direction. I've always said this, you know, you. Coaching the high school football team was, you know, you're you're always kind of hurting them. You're not driving them because that doesn't work. But you're kind of you're kind of hurting them. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're taking and putting a whole yeah. group in one direction because you've got to have your administration on board. You got to have your community on board. You got to have, uh, you know, parents believing in 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 in, in, in your program and and so. Taking that whole group and moving them in one direction is is always been, you know, now, I wouldn't say a pet peeve, but it's a challenge. That's oh, a know? huge challenge. It really is. So. It really is. Who was your uh, who's your who's your favorite sports hero? Oh, golly, I don't know. I've got a lot of them, really. I mean, uh, you know, for all of his for all of his 
Uh, some of some of them are guys that that probably may not be highly. Uh, I like the guys that played hard, and they 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 maybe you know uh, they weren't uh, maybe uh, always their behavior may not have always been the best. Right. Right. But 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 you know uh, like uh, John Hanna was an offensive lineman years ago from Alabama to play for the Patriots, New England Patriots, a very good player. You know, growing up, I had I idolized players and coaches. You know, uh, OU was big back then. Right. You know, and Barry Switzer and the, his coaches, and and then the players there, uh, and uh, just a lot of them. You know, of course, Steve Davis. He's he's uh, my sister's age. He's nine years older than I am. He would, I remember him when he was in high school. Right. You know, but that gave one. us a. You know, yeah. he, he that gave us a great connection yeah. to Steve because yeah. he was from here. We knew him growing up because we yeah. lived in a small we town. Him. You yeah. know, I had I had, you know, I had six older brothers yeah. and sisters. You know, from seventeen years older than me, that t- down to six. Mm-hmm. You know, and and uh, so, you know, with what you're saying is there's two kinds of things. And when you talk about Southside football, those a lot of those people were my heroes growing up. Mm-hmm. When you talk about mm-hmm. Steve Davis and yeah. you talk about Bill Orndorff and you yeah. talk about, uh, you, you know. A lot of different people, you yeah. know. Tom Stotts was in, you know. He, he was he was at, at our house. He basically lived, yeah. you know, grew up out of our refrigerator, yeah. just like my brother and sister did out of his his family's, you know. Yeah. So there were there were a lot of guys that I looked up to, mm-hmm. and and saw them as role models for me. And you know, you, when you take back in the '60s and the '70s at our at our small formidable ages, you know, we got to see a lot of uh, of that of that tradition of this program mm-hmm. being built and formed and shaped. Uh, right. Through Perry, starting with Perry Floyd Latimer, you know that's my earliest recollection. Is Perry Floyd Latimer, uh, the day that you broke the bottle in the yeah. in the, uh, the Gatorade uh, bottle, the Gatorade one bottle of those players the, left yeah. out. He, he was yeah. he was yeah. He was, anyway, great story. He was inspired. He was yeah. inspired. He, to, <laughs> he was inspired. To highly inspired <laughs> to teach those guys a lesson. Right. It was right. hot in that locker room and back <laughs> where they would practice in the morning. They had a real two a days. They practiced at eight o'clock in the morning and come back at four o'clock and. They were getting, there was no air conditioning over there, and we, we broke a Gatorade bottle. No, wait, wait, we, we wait, were wait a minute. Wait a minute. Or I did. So it's, it's, and, what's and, this we stuff? I was on the other side of the room. He was, he was, uh, he was really about halfway laughing about it, though. But, but he, he, was, he thought that we'd be so going back to, on the Floyd you know, side. Speaking of, speaking, of, speaking of Perry Floyd, though, uh-huh. you know, you're related to him. Uh-huh. And he, you know, he grew up and, and played here. Uh, and and you know his family name synonymous with the with the Floyd yes. family. You know it had uh-huh. far-reaching. Uh, uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here, but you know it was, it was a, a proud name here. And then he comes mm-hmm. back from Muldrow, takes over, mm-hmm. rebuilds the program, gets it on his feet, passes away uh, at 52 years old, I think it was. I don't know. It After was... making a semifinal appearance, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, he had some really good squads there, mm-hmm. and you know. Probably his best squad of his best squads was probably in the season of '69 when they go to Muskogee Manual. Okay. You know, in that controversy game mm-hmm. where they get beat. I was a little bitty guy's first grader when, I, and I, but I can still remember it like it's yesterday. And so, you know, and then and then Dennis Rogers takes over, makes a, a playoff appearance, mm-hmm. turns around, and then Ron Etheridge takes over for him, and he's a young coach. And then uh, it, then it's handed to Ronnie Aswell, and then from Ronnie it goes to Ron Lancaster. Mm-hmm. And then from Ron Caster to Ron Lancaster to Virgil, mm-hmm. and then to me, and then uh, Scotty Bethel took over for me, and then Randon Lowe, and now where we're currently at with Mark Hudson. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, you, that goes back uh, almost uh, 60 years, 65 oh, yeah. years yeah. worth of worth of worth of coaches. Yeah. And and some of those guys only spent, you know, my tenure here was six. Ron Etheridge has the longest tenure here, mm-hmm. 12 years. Mm-hmm. And so. I'd say the uh, average is around five to seven. It is, six yeah. probably yeah. for being here, which is a long time. Uh, probably not back then it wasn't, but 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 as time's gone on, it that's pretty long time, right? Someplace, right? But you talk about all, a lot of success throughout mm-hmm. the years that a lot of those names have had, you know. Oh yeah. And so, um, you know, it, it 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 all goes back to and I, and I'm and I I can't speak for pre. Perry Floyd because I really didn't know that you know I didn't know you know I knew Wayne Hawkins but I didn't know right. uh, him as a coach right. never never identified I, him as a coach right I just knew him as a principal yeah that's exactly right yeah. so uh, I didn't you know, know some of those names till you know you start looking at the history of the coaches and stuff and uh, you know uh, doing the trivia questions for the TV broadcast 
on Channel 19 get you looking back at, at websites and, and seeing the history of, and the schedules or the, uh, the records, win-loss records of, of coaches right. all time and things like that. And uh, There's a lot of coaches back, several. And actually, I think it goes back. I've seen it. There's a list at the football stadium in there inside the stadium that has well, goes the real, back into the 20s. <clears throat> right. And I wasn't familiar with that. I was just familiar back to about 1947. Yeah. Now, I don't know if we have one loss records of all those coaches or not, but things like that. So, tell me this. How, how do you think, as an athlete, inspired you to be a better person? Well, I think athletics, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a – it's just like life. You have ups and downs. You have to keep plugging along, no matter what happens. You know, no matter what somebody says or does, you have to keep going. And uh, just like life is, yeah. you, you can't. Things bad, bad things happen. You got to keep on going. You know, just and and I think your body language is so important. You know, um, when something bad happens, it's almost like I'm not going to give them the satisfaction of making my shoulder slump. I'm going to act like I expected that to happen or I knew it could happen. <laughs> I have, you know, I, I, I still, mean, I still, sometimes I, there's locally, there's teams that I still speak to. And I always tell this story. I started with every single one that I've spoke to. I always tell it, tell the story to everything I learned as, as a, as a young man that shaped and molded me as a person, I learned in that locker room. You mm -hmm. think of all the things you can learn in that locker room. Right. I mean, you can learn about pecking order. That's been one of the first things mm -hmm. you, you learn. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you also know who to stay away from, right. uh, who, who I can, what kind of group that I can fit into. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you find that in your job place all right. the time, those, those very same things. And, and, you know, you can, you can find out about peer pressure. You can find out about, uh, about learning how to become and when it's your time to be that that role model that leader yeah. what's your what's the responsibility what's your responsibility you learn is from the guys in front exactly of you. yeah and you know i think what what happens is 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 is, is we were fortunate enough to be around a, 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 you know coaches that were not only good coaches they were mm -hmm. good people right and so we, we we were able to learn a lot of that through osmosis and but it, but at the same time they allowed us to be leaders and they allowed us to have a voice they allowed us to to uh you know, for example, you know, uh, I learned this from Ron Etheridge one time. We were talking about playing time. I was a young kid, and he goes, I'm going to te teach you a lesson. He said, you want to come to my office and talk about it? He said, uh, "He said that'd be great. He said, you're going to have a job one of these days. And he said, you need to learn how to go in and talk to your superior and talk about those things that you think that, that are unjust or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And, and when, when he said that, it made perfect sense. You know, um, and, and so I brought that along as a coach myself and, and and I always tried to you know I wanted kids to come in and talk mm -hmm. to me if they felt like they were yeah. uh, being uh, treated un unfairly right, right. but also wanted them you know when they came in they got to hear the good and the bad too you know right. I got to tell them my side yeah. of what I see as a coach yeah. and so they got to they got to basically uh, interview just as I did mm -hmm. and, and and got to see that from a from a different set of eyes so uh, you know, like, and I'll, I'll and I go back and say this. I use the things, I use those tools that I learned in that locker room, in every job that I've ever had. It's never failed me. You know, so um, it's a miniature. You're right. A, a locker room, a team, is a miniature version of bigger society. It is. And it is. Football is so diverse. You think about the different types of people you have to have: your kickers, your linemen. You know, there, there's a difference between offensive and defensive linemen. I mean, the different, different social groups, cultures, whatever that has to meld, meld together to be successful. Right, right. You know, so okay, so let me ask you this. Tell me this. Do you think attitude is a factor in winning? Oh yes, definitely. It's how you how you approach something, how you react to adversity, you know, and uh, it's everything. Uh, it, it, it's it's a good attitude can energize your body, energize your team, you know. Those uh, around you, and those around you. Yeah, it, 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 it's 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 contagious. So tell me this: uh, what, what, what's one word to describe Salisaw football? If you had one word to describe it, what what would you how how would you describe that? And that's a really tough question. Oh, it is. I may need another week to think about this one. One word. We're going to probably go more than one word on the what. 
That's a, yeah, one word on what describes South, how, how you would describe South South football. Yeah. And you know, we've, we've been a part of, we've been fortunate to be part of it from two different angles. Mm-hmm. Well, three actually, mm-hmm. or four, however you want to say it, because yeah. we've been, we, you know, we've, we've been a fan. Yeah. Uh, we've we been grew a, up we and grew, we played. We grew up watching it and we played. Yeah. And then we came back as coaches mm-hmm. and now we're kind of involved again in yeah. the broadcast. So yeah. we've seen it from several different angles. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, Three of those we've done together. We played mm-hmm. together, we coached together, and now we're doing the broadcast together. So uh, I'm not, you know, we're going to sit here and say that, that we have any more uh, in investment in this program than anybody else. That's, that's not where I'm coming from. But when you say, what one word describes Southside football, there's a, there's a number of words, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, the first thing that comes to, to you know, to, to, uh, to my, my mind is, it's life altering. It, it, it's shaped and molded. I talked about that earlier. It's shaped and molded mm-hmm. pretty much everything I knew. I feel very fortunate to have grown up in such a good program. You know, we talked about just a minute ago about, uh, you know, is, 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 uh, is attitude a factor? You know, that's, Salsa has an attitude when mm-hmm. it comes to their football. Right. Uh, you know, we, we had an attitude when it came to, uh, you know, because we had, there was such a belief system that was put in place uh, that was, you know, that was shaped and, and molded by the guys that came before us because they had great success and we wanted to be in that same role. Mm-hmm. And then you had a group of young coaches that came in and, and set the tone for how we were going to be. And then it was up to us to execute that. But, you know, I've always said there's three things that a community's got to have. And we were, we pretty much, you know, wrote the mold on this early in the years. And that was the community has to want it. The, the, the administration has to be willing to give it the, the, the tools and, and, and uh, resources it needs to be mm-hmm. successful. The football team and the coaches need to understand that, mm-hmm. and they've got to have a plan and vision that puts that all in place. And, if you, and without any one of those three, right. it's, a, it's a breakdown. It's an infrastructural breakdown. Yeah. So There's a standard of performance that I think, that, you know, there's a lot of great coaches and players that have played here. Guys are still, we could walk out this door and, and go 10 minutes in any direction and find several guys working here in town or living here in town that were affected in a positive way like we were. That's true. A lot of players, some guys we coach, some guys we watched play. Right. You know, and we're watching them play now or we watched them play when, when we were, before we was even in high school or we coached them when we were here. It's just, uh, there's a lot of people that it, that it, that it, uh, that it affected positively, and that have a great a lot of stakeholders in the program, and uh, there is a standard of performance. There really is in in all aspects of it. That uh, I think that's yeah. maybe maybe said it best right there. I think that's a yeah. great great statement that you just made. There's been a there's been a standard of performance because mm-hmm. this is a gen- generational situation. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if you take for example, uh, you know. The, so how many how many different kids that we coached were three generation oh, yeah. black diamonds? You know, yeah. you're both your boys, Sam and Matt were yeah. three yeah. generational sure. black diamonds. You know, you had the Ely boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I, I I'm hitting a, I'm hitting a, a, a roadblock here. Seth Morgan, you had you had um, um, Garrett 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 Glad. Glad. There you go. Uh, uh, Third generation black diamond and Ethan Davenport's. There you go. Jeremy Jaden. You had uh, you had uh, Kel Wilson. Right, Brian Wilson. You had, and then back you had uh, Oversties. The Oversties, and you had golly, we're gonna leave someone out. There's, uh, there's there was so many of them. Several of them. Of them. There, there was, there that, was, there were yeah. several, several, several different Brandons. generations. There you go. Forgot Brand, about, you know, forgot about that. There uh, you go. James and his son Derek, and and then uh, Terry Sanders. And his, Ty. his kids exactly played before right. we got here. To, you know, right. Uh, many, 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 and then. Sorry, and you're right. We're, and we're leaving somebody I'm sorry out. Sorry, we left people out. There, there he is. And uh, yeah, that's but, a big factor. True, and, true. You know, and that that you you fear that goes away at some point. You know, that's a fear that it, it goes away because inevitably, if it does, if you know, uh, there are players now that had their parents, their 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 dad or grandparents played. I think you know. Here's Southall. Just a vast. That's just a vast, huge area right there. Right. You know. Uh, uh, last thing, talking about the 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 the. Uh, and we're, we're kind of the last question we got here, mm-hmm. but you know, 
being a being 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 that athlete, how has that inspired you to be a better person? How's that transcended into into your into your uh, uh, well, later life? Yeah, I think you uh, you have to uh, just the habits. I think, I think life is a lot of habits. It really is. You know, sometimes uh, good ones and sometimes oh, yeah. bad ones. Good and bad habits. Everybody has them, and hopefully you have more good habits than bad. And hopefully the good habits were developed in athletics. You right. know, the, the, the field of competition is the greatest classroom there is, you know, it really is because it's, it's, a, it's a, I guess, microcosm of life or it's a good point. version of very, life. Very good I point. I guess that's the very right word. Point. Very good it's a pretty point. big word for me to be using there. But, right. Can you, you know, spell that? A, yeah, I think I probably could. <laughs> I can spell microscope so I can get the first part of it. Micro, then that's cosmo. A good, that's a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> but, but, I, but I, I, you know, if, if you... I think that I think that football has saved more kids than what it's failed. I don't know of one that's ever failed. You know the old saying we've all heard it a million times. Uh, you need football worse than it needs you. That's right. That's right. You know, and you know, and I've heard I've heard this said before. Well, it's just it's a you know I've had I've had I've had I've had this has been said to me you know by parents. Well, it's just a silly game. Eh, maybe, but it's it's also it's also a game of life. And 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 what I mean by that is. Like you said, that's a great statement you made that the, the, the field of competition is the greatest classroom you can have. You know, we, we always said, you know, we, we, when they came to us, whether they were a milk drinker or a whiskey drinker, we had to coach them the same. Mm -hmm. and, and, that, and we've had, you know, we've had our share of both of those, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, we, we've had a lot of kids that came to school because of that. That, that kept them in school. Yeah. And then... After we after we captured them there in that environment, mm -hmm. they were able to broaden their mind and 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 go and do big, bigger do things better in life. At yeah. the other parts yeah. of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. we always used to tell them, you know, some yeah. of you may go to Penn State and some of you may go to State Penn, <laughs> but we're you know that's our job is to keep you out of that State Penn. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, but but I I think though that when you look around town, when you go to the ball game and mm -hmm. you see uh, you know and you, you you look at the youth league and you see that there is these, you know, the, this, these second generational kids yeah. coming or third generational kids coming, you know, yeah. it, it cycles back through. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those kids wouldn't, the younger generation, probably wouldn't be afforded the opportunity or their dads wouldn't have such an att attraction for them to play had it not had an impact in their life. Right. That's and right. so I see what it did for them, helped them. And that's a great point talking about they come in and then you get them captured, like you said, and then it motivates them to be a better student or better father yeah. or husband later later on where they wouldn't wouldn't have been if they had right. been in the football program because not all of them are going to Harvard right. not all of them are going right. to Oklahoma you know right. we we've right. we've got a we've we've got a, a handful of players that we coach that now drive a nail or right. uh, or or uh, you know or or lay mud or run wire you know put conduit in a house or whatever the case may be or they Work for the city. They, they've got a lot, a lot of our former players have yeah. have you know have started in their careers and done great things. You t you know you mentioned yeah. Derek Branham. Derek Branham, uh, you know, went out to Panhandle State, played, ended up staying in Western Oklahoma, and now he you know he makes a does really good as an as a as a as a uh, implement dealer. Implement, you know, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so yeah. you know, there's some that have gotten away. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe you'll never come back. Right. And, and we hate that for ours because right. we'd, uh, like we'd, to, we'd yeah. like to have them oh, back yeah. in our system. Yeah, but it, it keeps the cycle going. Exactly. Yeah. But at the same time, there's been a lot of them that have, have stayed here and been a great uh, addition, to our, uh, uh, you know, addition to our adult society mm -hmm. and, and now are doing a lot of good things for our community. I hope and I know they have, they, it's a source of pride for them. That, you know, they, it's a source of pride for them that they played. And, and, and they played football here, and uh, you know, as you know, they're they're getting to be 30, 40 years old now or older, and it's a great source of pride, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it is for me. It was for me. It still is, and I hope it is that way for them too. Yeah, you know, and I'd I, I'd have a reunion every every season. Or, you, you know could. what I'm saying? Right. You could exactly. You know uh, exactly. Those get-togethers are great things to have.